Hey guys, welcome to Ashen Workshop. Today we're making Thor and Oak and Shields bracers from The Hobbit, so let's get started. First thing you want to do is follow the link down below to grab your pattern, or you can search it up at The Ashen Workshop on Etsy. The bracers can be resized by scaling them up or down when you go to print them. The bracers require about six square feet of eight to 10 ounce vegetable tanned leather. There's a lot of ways to cut out leather. A lot of people prefer shears or a razor blade. I prefer a Japanese skiving knife. The only two punches I use for this project are a number two drive punch and a three quarter inch oblong punch. Wet down your leather so that it's a little bit damp and cool, but not soggy. Then lay your pattern over the top of it and then follow the thin black lines with either a pen, a stylus, or my favorite is a stitching awl. All this is gonna do is leave a nice impression underneath uh, so that you can follow the lines with your swivel knife. Don't worry about your lines being perfect. They're gonna be a little bit choppy and you can clean all of that up with your swivel knife afterwards. It'll correct a lot of the mistakes that you make with the really touchy parts of the awl. I just picked up this slice swivel knife. I only use it for like three or four lines because I find out that I hate it, so. The only two stamps I use on this project are a steep beveler and a flat smooth backgrounder, but the backgrounder turned out not to help at all, so you actually don't have to use that at all if you don't want to. I use a number two edge beveler because I don't want the edges to be super round and just kind of squared off. I'm only using water here to burnish the edges. It might not seem like much, but it works just fine. At this point, you should have these three pieces and don't forget about your buckle straps.
Alcohol dye has a tendency to pool up on the surface and become kind of rough, so make sure you buff out the excess after it's dried. All I'm doing here is using the surface of any flat tool to compress the areas around where the rivets are going to sit inside so that they lay more flat when the top panel is stitched over top of it. And then I'm going to widen those holes just a little bit to make sure that when I insert the post from the bottom that it's going to insert smoothly. A little bit of super glue is all you need to hold these rivet caps in place, just to make sure that they're going to stay situated when we're stitching the top panel. I've mixed neutral resiline 50-50 with some water, and then I'm just going to give that a couple of good coats on top of each panel to harden them up, make them a little bit more durable. Make sure you wipe away the excess, otherwise you might see shadows of the bubbles that are left behind afterwards. This is usually the point where you would punch your holes for your stitching lines. Um, I hate hand stitching and I have a sewing machine, so I'm gonna use that, but punch your holes, it's super easy. I just don't like to do it. At this point, I'm going to coat the buckle straps in 100% neutral resiline. Uh, it should make them nice and strong, not nearly as flexible, but it will keep them in place. They won't stretch, they won't break. Now that everything is stitched together and your straps are attached, you can start shaping the bracer. At this point, it's gonna be really, really stiff, so just take your time, bend it slowly as necessary, shape it to the wearer's arm, and then once you get to a point where you're comfortable, you can attach the straps and let it sit overnight. And there you have it, a set of bracers worthy of a mountain king.
Hey, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like the pattern and the video, feel free to subscribe, smash the like button, and I will see you in the next one.